Today I'm going to show you what amethyst really looks like when it's ground up into a pigment. So I have three pieces of quite high quality amethyst. I'm going to show you with a very bright flashlight. And as you can see, these are very, very violet. So I'm going to first ground up one piece. Let's have a look for impurities. So with this one, you can see that there's a, well, there's some impurities here. With this one, you can. So I've checked if these are real. How can you check it? Amethyst is harder than glass, right? So that's, that's one. Uh, it can scratch glass. If it can scratch glass, it's probably real. Um, if it doesn't show any signs of, you know, uh, mechanical uh, um, shaping, um, but looks natural, so impurities, that's a good, good sign. Uh, also, if you have a polished piece of amethyst or any kind of uh, uh, gem or, or stone, just hold a lighter against it if it's not too precious to you uh, because there are resins that are very hard and cold to the touch uh, they look like a, a, a piece of mineral or, or gem and um, they melt so be careful with that I'm going to put this into that I'm going to make some noise let's use some protection flying around. Uh, I've just broken it up into smaller pieces. What you can see here already gives, kind of gives away what will be the end result. So let's fully grind this up. So there's a neat little trick when you have loads of tiny shards um, and some powder, you want to make it wet. So why do you want to do this? It stops the powder from flying everywhere. As you can see, I'm, I have loads of things going on, so it's a bit messy over there, but... It's not very promising. It's not very promising at all. So if you want to do this yourself, uh, please be careful for the little shards that fly away. I'm wearing glasses, but you know, the shards didn't come any further than uh, this tabletop over here because I covered it with a cloth. Um, please be careful. 
as I said, it's harder than glass and these shards are very sharp so that you don't cut yourself. If you want to try this yourself, you have a beautiful piece of violet amethyst and you want to turn it into a, uh, <laughs> a gray mush, then please feel free to do so, but always be careful. Think about safety first. So I'm going to let this dry and we'll come back to see how fine the powder is, if it needs any more uh, grinding and um, let's make paint out of that. So it's the next day and I put the pigment in a bottle. As you can see, the violet, the amethyst is completely unrecognizable. So uh, what I have here is just to show you and I've kept an eye on it as well. The smaller you make it, the less purple or violet it becomes. So it doesn't really have anything to do with particle size, uh, apart from the fact that you know a, size, a piece like this or like this is clearly a violet, but it's unusable as a pigment. So I ground it up to be fine enough to make paint out of it. Let's see what it does on the slab, shall we? Top pigments are very light and grayish when they are dry and become more vibrant when they are wet. As you can see, this is clearly not one of them. It gets darker, but just a darker gray. So I'm treating this if, you know, as if I would do with any pigment, mineral pigment or natural pigment. But to be honest, I don't think anything I'll do to it now would make this into something that kind of resembles that color. So obviously it's more coarse than you know your synthetic pigment, but I think it is dispersed enough to swatch it. Let's have a look.
Yeah. This isn't Violet. <laughs> I don't think um, there's more I can do to show you that really uh, amethyst like this doesn't turn into a violet purple or even the even a muted version of, of those colors uh, yeah it's not really disappointing it is what I expected it but uh, it to be but uh, <laughs> it's just too fun to to do the process yourself and actually see you know what happens and where you need to be extra careful with what you believe marketing wise uh, or you know just believe people on what they say things are um, if there's any doubt test it if there's uh, any doubt uh, especially with a smaller community the handmade paint community just ask it ask it nicely um, there should be transparency, not in your paint, but in communication about what's in your paint. You're paying uh, quite a bit of money for it. Um, I know that handmade paint is more expensive than your you know, regular commercial paint, but I can't buy anything that's, that's uh, violet. And it would say it's 100% this, while knowing that it's not possible. So there you go. So after some research, I found out that if I add this little magic powder, it'll make the amethyst paint actually look like amethyst. Would you look at that? Just a small bit of magic. That's already turning to, into a beautiful violet. It's muted still, but a beautiful violet paint. Let's see if we add more of the magic dust to see if we can actually enhance that. Look at this wonderful deep violet it gives us it's truly magic and you know i have used genuine amethyst for this you've you've seen it i've used you know that paint over there and i just enhanced it with dioxazine violet PV23. So it's about you know the final amount that I added <laughs> is 50% of the pigment used. Not that we need any proof, but That looks more like it. I know it's hard to see on camera. You have to see it, the transparency of the stone, but that's, it looks pretty much like it. And nothing like this. So, like I said, please, if there's any doubt, check it first. Now let's enhance it with even more genuine amethyst and it really doesn't do anything. So there you go. Amethyst. Genuine amethyst. Not the color, but the actual mineral. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and see you soon.